Thanks for joining us for 13 News Live at 10. I'm Sean Mahoney. The trial of Christopher Clements will enter its third week after the prosecution completes its list of witnesses and tries to provide the jury a picture of what Clements was doing the night six year old Isabel Sellis went missing. 13 News reporter JD Wallace is live downtown at Superior Court after speaking with a juror from another murder trial that has Clements already serving life in prison. JD, what did you hear? Well, Sean, a juror from that previous trial is watching this one closely and sees similarities between the two cases, a comparison this jury cannot make because they're not supposed to know that Clements is already serving a life sentence for a different murder. From cell phone tracking to photos found on his devices, prosecutors have presented Christopher Clements as someone interested in prepubescent girls, also placing him near where the remains of Isabel Sellis would be found the day she went missing. The six-year-old girl disappeared from her bedroom April 21, 2012, and would not be found until Clements directed FBI agents near Trico and Aver Valley Roads in 2017. But there is no DNA evidence placing Clements in the girl's bedroom, and none of her DNA was was in his car five years after she went missing. What this jury won't know is Clements is already serving a life sentence for kidnapping and killing 13-year-old Maribel Gonzalez, who disappeared in June 2014, and whose remains were found in a similar area, Trico and Ever Valley Roads. But the Gonzalez case had DNA from a pubic hair to connect Clements to her murder. A juror from that trial, who does not want to be on camera or use their name, is closely following the trial of Clements for Isabel Sellis' murder and sees similarities between the two cases. But without DNA evidence, they wonder if this jury will have an adequate timeline and be satisfied with cell phone tracking that uses general locations to connect Clements with the little girl's disappearance. The first trial in this case ended with a mistrial from a hung jury. After watching the Sellis family having to sit through a second trial and relive the events around Isabel Sellis's disappearance, this juror hopes that a conviction this time will give the Sellis family some sense of justice. The trial resumes Wednesday and the defense will soon call its rebuttal witnesses before closing arguments. And if the last trial is any guide, that could happen this week. Reporting live from downtown, J.D. Wallace, 13 News.